<clears throat> Thank you. I look at art very comprehensively. Art brings people together. Art creates community. Well, how great would it be if we leveraged the, the world-renowned institutions that we have downtown and use art and our infrastructure development to bring art to communities, to brand communities, to bring performances to neighborhoods, to bring folks in, into these institutions. I would convene a comprehensive table that will include tourism, the restaurant industry, all of the creative economy, so that together we can create this common vision about 2030, again, as we celebrate 2026. Branding neighborhoods through art becomes important. It helps gives us, anchor us in where, why we are here, when we are here. I will amplify our world heritage status, status our diversity, all of the things that, that link us together. Art is a key component to, to bringing our city together in a common vision. Not only are we going to make Philadelphia the safest city in America, but we're going to have an intense marketing campaign that also brings us not only the birthplace of democracy, but we're going to be a world-class hub for arts and culture, but not just because your economic impact, also because you are a part of the solution. Arts and culture provides access to hope for young people who are born into poverty like I am. When I got introduced uh, to literature, black women's literature in particular by my high school English teacher, all of a sudden I had artists in residence. I was at the Painted Bride in Society Hill Playhouse. The arts became my way of expressing what my humble beginnings were and it allowed me to escape my socioeconomic current status. So how will you do it, Sherelle? Philadelphia doesn't have to pay for it all. This is how. Partnering with DCED, LNI, PCCD. Um, but good news, uh, we do have a question that feedbacks on this. It's 20 seconds. We're going to start with Ms. Kim. We're going to work down the line once again in 20 seconds. Um, so as was stated by several folks, I think well aware with this audience, it's um, a $3.4 billion plus minus. I can't count that high. Economic impact that the performing and creative arts have on the Philadelphia economy. $800 million of that is because of the folks that call this incredible building home. One in 15 workers across this city are employed in this industry. The question though is, what is one policy change in 20 seconds to make sure that all 66 wards are benefiting from the creative economy? Yeah, so I would absolutely um, talk about education and the arts. I am invested in making sure that every young person across the city of Philadelphia has equal access, just access to the arts. That can not only happen through the schools, we can make sure that every institution has a school liaison, um, museum curators, and others to bring them back and uh, allow our children to experience the joy of this city. Well, one policy is making sure that the mayor's office of arts and culture is a permanent independent entity of the city of Philadelphia. So we don't have to deal with um, people trying to get rid of that entity going forward. Also, make, having that independent funding will help that organization to be able to go around the city and let people know how vital arts and culture is to the economy, the vitality, and the safety of Philadelphia. Two things I would do. One, I would make sure that the arts and culture is funded in the general fund as a permanent funding source. It should be some additional tax. It's so important, it should be permanent. And then I would make sure it's in the schools. We know that arts and culture reduces dropout rates increases the tennis and increases GPA. Under my administration, all schools in this city would become cultural hubs for social emotional learning through the arts, where each child would get to choose a particular art class. This would, this would employ artists throughout the city of Philadelphia. So I think what we need first, because there's lots of things we need, is the arts community needs a seat at the table. And the best way to do that is to hire permanently a deputy mayor in charge of arts, culture, and fun, to work with the community and work with the administration to make sure we're thinking about the arts in every decision we make. As mayor, I would direct all of the operating departments under the leadership uh, of the mayor's office to weave arts into their programming so that every student, for example, in the library or rec center has arts programming 
and to direct the funding to make sure everyone is growing in the same boat across our city. As I mentioned earlier, I would convene all of the art, the different creative economy folks together so that we can create, similar to Boston and Chicago, a big picture plan for the city of Philadelphia um, that includes all components of, of the art sector and properly funded so that we have small arts grants, branding in places, uh, green spaces and open spaces all become theaters and art Thank pieces you. all over the city. Ensure that arts and culture is an essential part of problem solving in the city of Philadelphia. It should be embedded in workforce development. And I would use my intergovernmental experience because bullhorns don't work in Harrisburg, but that revenue that I was talking about from all of those different line items, like the Pennsylvania Humanities and the Museum Commission, you have to know how to secure it, and we will. The arts funds itself, $920 million in household income annually and $157 million in local taxes. To grow the arts economy is to provide more money to the city, but people need jobs. The best way to help every section of this city is providing more and more jobs that people can take, that they need the opportunity to learn and to advance. Start with that, Mr. Green, this time. Visitors from nearly every state in the union and every continent have come to the Kimmel Cultural Campus. And 18% of visitors to this campus come from outside this market and spend five times more than the average visitor. It is a fact that arts and cultural attractions drive tourism, and there is an economic ripple effect. There, is, there are going to be a lot of visitors to the city in 2026. We're expecting the World Cup, the MLB All-Star Game, America's 250th anniversary. What will you do in month one, January 2024, to begin planning and getting people excited to come here? You have 30 seconds. Well, what would I do? <laughs> what I would do as mayor is using my experience and relationships at a national level as a past national president of Democrat municipal officials as well as serving on the executive committee of national cities. I would reach out to mayors all around this, this country as well as using my relationship as past president of Pennsylvania Municipal League because the whole world should be here in Philadelphia July 4th, 2026. Is the 250th anniversary of our nation, and they all should be here experiencing what we all know is enjoying the Philadelphia, especially the arts and culture that we have here. <clears throat> Before day one, I would reach out to our past mayors and say to them, you've had big events here. How have you done it? What kind of leadership is required? Get their ideas from them. They had, we had the Pope come, we had all types of big events here. But in addition to that, last week I did speak with the World Cup people, and there's going to be, I think, 450,000 visitors here. We're going to be sharing some time, possibly with Newark or uh, the Meadowlands. So I would figure out from the hospitality end, how do we create packages to keep people in the city for a longer period uh, through the hotels and restaurants? On day one, I would make sure that the funds were necessary given to the Philadelphia Vis Visitors Bureau and our various chambers of commerce. And I would deploy them throughout the United States and internationally with international ad campaigns to talk to our sister cities, to talk to various other cities, to talk to the people within their various chambers of commerce throughout the world to make sure that the excitement is built up for everyone to come here in 2026. So let's establish that we are already uh, a world-class arts destination. And, but, but we don't always think of ourselves that way, and we need to change our mindset. And I think we need to have a calendar of, of arts, culture, and fun. It goes every single day of the week, month, year. So when you come to Philadelphia, there's always a lot of fun things to do. And we have all those visitor, visitors, we have a chance to showcase what we're about. We need to plan that and really do it up. The year is going, 2030 is going to be, uh, sorry, 2026, I apologize is going to be an amazing, amazing year for the city. Um, on day one, when I'm mayor, I will be the number one cheerleader for our city. Uh, we first have to get our city safe and clean. But then in addition to that, I would pull together the arts leaders, the Kimmel Center, the orchestra, and others, and ask, what can I do for you as the mayor? How can I make your job easier so that we thrive and have an amazing experience in 2026? Thank you. 
again, I keep repeating, there's a multi-sector approach that we need to bring to, to the table as we celebrate 2026. We need our creative economy, we need our restaurants, we need our tourism, and we need to make sure that those 400,000 visitors or the millions of visitors that will visit will not only visit downtown, but will also go into our neighborhood. And in order to do that, we have to be very intentional, intentional ensuring that folks get an opportunity to visit all the diversity we have throughout the city. Do what my grandmother said and get our house in order. I'm going to implement my neighborhood safety and community policing plan and put 300 proactive officers engaged in community policing in neighborhoods across the city. Put on steroids my PHL taking care of business, commercial quarter, neighborhood cleaning program on the ground, and then I'm going to advocate for an increase in the film tax credit uh, in, Har uh, in Harrisburg because I want everything recorded when we're shining in 2026. <laughs> Um, the first thing is we have to have a reputation for being a safe city. That has to go throughout the nation and throughout the world. So the first thing, make Philadelphia a safe place. The second thing is we have to clean up uh, our city and, and in addition, deal with our public transportation system. I have in the past tried to withhold money to SEPTA in exchange for their improvements of public transportation. And then, and then finally, we have to promote this event here in, this, in our region, nationally, and globally. My mission is to ignite a cultural renaissance all across the city of Philadelphia in every neighborhood. My primary issue, though, is about equity. I want to make sure that every resident in the city, especially those who have been long neglected, have a chance to enjoy the riches of 2026. Um, that includes a young person. That means making sure that there is a paintbrush and a musical instrument and a marching band baton in every young person's hands so that they can welcome uh, all the people who are visiting here um, and making sure that the city really invests in the cultural vitality all across Philadelphia. Okay, we have a related follow-up. I thought I was going to hear them 23, 24, and 25. The Phillies were going to win the World Series and they were going to go into the major league all-star <laughs> game with that. But that's, but that's out of control of City Hall. Um, that being said, let's imagine your mayor. It's the fall of 2025. The eyes of the world are going to see a commercial. You're going to record that commercial in 20 to 30 seconds at most. Pretend it's overseas. Don't worry, we'll translate it. People have never been there. Give us your pitch what to see on their first trip to Philadelphia. We're going to start with you, Mr. Dom, and work it around. <clears throat> Number one, you'll see the safest city in the United States. You'll see the cleanest city in the United States. You'll see the most fun city in the United States. And we're a unique city. We have tremendous arts and culture here. And the architecture of our city is very unique. It's not like any other city. It'll be a fun time in Philadelphia. There will be a commercial dish that will welcome people to Philadelphia, a diversified city, a city of neighborhoods that are diversified neighborhoods. The cultures here are diversified cultures. We welcome your culture to ours, and we want your culture to become part of ours, and we want you to enjoy your stay here in Philly, a safe place to be, safe place to live. While you're in Philadelphia, a world-class arts destination, come and see the largest display of outside art in the world with our murals. Come check out the largest park in the world in Philadelphia. Come check out the destination with the highest density of universities. And all of the arts and culture that are so plentiful, so unique, and so diverse, this is a world-class arts destination. And enjoy our restaurants while you're here. Come to the city of Philadelphia. We are a world-class city, a city of amazing neighborhoods and arts and culture, restaurants and sports teams. From the small arts organizations of the neighborhoods, from our murals to the art museum, the Kimmel, the orchestra, we have an amazing world-class city and we're here ready to welcome you. Our immigrant communities, uh, all of our people, we would love to have you here. Come join and celebrate America's birthday with us. I would call the campaign Revisit Philadelphia, the birthplace of America, the world heritage city with neighborhoods filled with creativity, uh, young people, open spaces, green spaces, arts. Come revisit Philadelphia, learn your history, and see how you can move forward a city together, united. 
come to Philadelphia where authenticity matters. There is a place for everyone and you can be you as you experience what it's like to create using the best and the brightest and multimodal artistic expression while eating the most delicious food in the whole wide world. <laughs> I'd say come to Philadelphia. Learn about the uh, history of democracy here and abroad, which originates in Philadelphia. Bring your family, bring your children, spend time here in our city. Uh, it's an education vacation. Um, you can see uh, arts and culture, you can see uh, world-class sports, our universities, our science, our technology. Uh, you can enjoy all those things within the setting of a, a city of neighborhoods where you can enjoy the diversity of food and culture throughout the city. Um, well, I would like to open with a stake of, what, of the beauty of Philadelphia, from the Color Girls Museum to Mid Autumn Festival, from uh, Taya Puerto Rico to the man. I think that there is an amazing wealth of riches that I'd love to showcase. I want to showcase the people, the working artists, the creators, the educators, um, the technicians that put on the best stages and the biggest parties in Philadelphia. I hope Philadelphia comes across as the biggest, best place to celebrate, to enjoy, and to, to really showcase life and the cultural vitality of our city. So I, I would have a commercial that says, welcome to the city of Philadelphia, the birthplace of this nation, showing young people and communities all around our city, using our mural arts and all the great activities we have, showing the milestones that we've done in our city, and showing the rich diversity and cultural intensity that we have in the city. That's why we are the birthplace of our nation, and that's why the cultural intensity is the reason why the city of Philadelphia is the best place to be, and we want you to come and not only celebrate that year, but most of the years, and see why we are the city of brother love, and as my wife often says, sisterly effectiveness. Wow, those are some pretty good pitches for commercials already. Maybe we should consider moving back here. <laughs> well, we need to figure out what languages we're gonna translate them into, but yes, uh, I think we can get a round of applause as we're asking for that. I mean, theoretically, we're talking like mid-six figures of foot traffic could happen in the summer of 2026 or even before we know it. Yes. Uh, on that note, we're going to pivot a little bit to uh, something that's a little bit of a hot button topic for some people, and that's the subject of council building priority. Uh, the ultimate power that city council members have over development in their respective districts. In Chicago, aldermen there voted that they would not stop development and licensing of arts, workspaces, galleries, and theaters. Uh, in 15 seconds or less, we will start with you, Mr. Bruneau. Give us your thoughts, your general thoughts, on Council Manic Prerogative. Well, I'm up here with six uh, former council uh, members, and I, I feel that Council Manic Prerogative cannot stop development. It has to be overcome when it comes to the development of our city. So community input, credit. We have to consider um, the community's concerns. Councilmatic prerogative and two things I think are very problematic. I don't think we should do anything to hold back um, arts, culture, kind of the fun things we do, schools, and affordable housing. I, I think it should be absolutely uh, off the table. <laughs> we, we could have a whole evening on councilmatic prerogative, but 15 seconds. I think the focus on councilmatic prerogative uh, is because we haven't had strong leadership from the mayor. And as mayor, I would have a strong vision on housing, on development, uh, and that would lead the way. I've used Councilmatic Prerogative to plan out neighborhoods, and in South Kensington now, we have a vibrant, growing artistic community that includes the Crane Building, the Clay Studio, Taller Puerto Rico, and others. So I've shown that when you work with community, you can get it done. No one should engage in, I know what's best for you, people, policy making or development. The people who live in neighborhoods across the city of Philadelphia have a right to have a voice, and we should have a discussion and partnership, but we should not be permanent obstructionists just because we don't like something. Like, like the mayor, I look at the city as a whole, but there are 10 different distinct districts. Each district elects someone of their choosing to deal with the local issues of that district. 
mayors can drive a big vision for the city that unites Philadelphia. Um, we can make sure that what we've got is a chance for communities to weigh in and be a vibrant part of that conversation. But mayors should drive a big vision for affordable housing, uh, for artist development and space uh, that makes sense for Philadelphia. So the issue of Council Act Rider is about the fact that in our home on charter, we cannot convey or acquire land except by legislation. Other cities are dealing with the same issue and having my national experience and seeing some of the best practices to make sure that people in their communities have the best of interest, but we also have a plan for the entire city and move that city forward. This goes back to the leadership of the mayor. I'm probably the only one who uh, voted against a bill regarding council matter prerogative, but I would sit down with each district council member, develop a 10-year plan on taking people out of poverty, new paying, uh, good paying jobs, development, and work with them versus not work with them. You gotta work with them, it's gotta be a team. Okay, um, once again, another organization wants to have an entire evening on Council Manic I think there's a lot to say. Uh, but we're gonna move on. Um, in 2016, the Office of Arts, Culture, and Creative Economy, that's a mouthful, uh, was placed into the Managing Director. Do you pledge tonight, we're gonna start with you, Mr. Brown, to make a cabinet level post that's responsible for these issues. Some candidates have already touched on that. And if so, more specifically, what would be three items on a CV on a resume for that official? 30 seconds or less, please. So I, I absolutely pledge to do it. I, I said it previously. And they have to be a collaborator. They have to have experience in arts and culture. Uh, and they have to be prepared to get into the neighborhoods and, and be inclusive to include every part of our city. I absolutely would have a cabinet level official in my administration. I've said I would have a deputy mayor. Uh, it's extremely important to me. That person would have strong leadership skills, uh, experience and knowledge and appreciation of the arts and the ability to cut through uh, a lot of bureaucracy to get things done at the city. We've all agreed that a cabinet level position is vital if we're going to infuse uh, arts and culture and the creative economy as we build out the city and brand our neighborhoods throughout the city. I'm committed to do that and I want to bring in someone who looks at art as a point of bringing communities together, as, as a point of bringing economic development and, and building out our infrastructure throughout the city. So it, it would be not just an, or, or from the artistic perspective, but really a, in how do you use it to bring um, and unite communities. We would make sure that the person has the intellectual prowess and the respect within the industry to actually lead in that industry. In addition, we would make sure that he or she is a consensus builder, a coalition builder, to bring all of the sort of multimodal and multimedia facets together. And then we want them to be innovative in figuring out how can we generate revenue for arts and culture without always taxing our constituents. I'd have a deputy mayor who is highly regarded by uh, their peers, who has experience advocating for the arts. Secondly, I'd like a director of the uh, Creative Arts Economy Fund, a annual $40 million or $50 million fund, which again funds itself with a director, but a board made up of leading arts advocates. Um, yes, so I would make sure that we have a cult that we absolutely have a cabinet level position. My number one uh, job for them is to develop a cultural policy that is dedicated to ensuring that every single resident has meaningful access to the arts, particularly in neighborhoods that are long that have been long neglected. So that means that they have to have a dedication to equity, to understanding. I need them to be able to have experience working with young people. And then finally, my last skill set is I want them to be joyful. I want this. This is the business of joy and hope and resilience, and I want that person to be able to express that through all that they do. So I've already committed to having that type of person, but the person I would have in my office, in my administration, in my entire administration, is someone that does not believe in silos. Someone that understands that arts and culture helps address public safety issues, as well as economic development issues and helping grow entrepreneurship in our city, as well as hospitality. So the person that's gonna be in this position has that type of lived experience, as well as be able to connect an education system in our schools to bring all those perspectives together. We need someone that has that background and experience, and that's what we'll bring in a great illustration. Someone that doesn't decide us, but gets the job done. I will have a senior level um, 
personally, my imagination to assist, but I want to be the deputy mayor for arts, culture, and the creative economy because, I, A, I love it, and B, I'm okay working 18 hours a day doing whatever I have to do to make this city the best it can be. But I want to be at the table because I, I can help this whole arts and culture creative economy the best that it will get my attention. Then I can pick up the phone and call all the departments and coordinate. So yes, I would have a person in that cabinet level position. And that person would have to have a strong artistic management and a strong funding background, a fundraising background, as well as budgeting, and would be a person that would not be adverse to diversity and inclusion, and uh, more specifically, not be a backstab. We're going to do another uh, show of hands here now, and hopefully everyone will be honest. Who has written on SEPTA in the last week? <laughs> All right, all right, good, pretty good. Uh, the reason I'm asking this is because uh, the orchestra here is preparing for a large free community concert at Northeast High School. This is a tradition that has been several that started several years ago. As we all know, mass transit is critical in Philadelphia for many people to get around. Given this, what is your position, and how might you fund rapid transit up and down Roosevelt Boulevard? Now, how we're going to get this question answered is we're going to start in the middle of the stage uh, with Mr. Green, and we're going to go backwards with Ms. Ms. Gibb. Does that make sense? Um, so that is the question posed to you, Mr. Green. 15 seconds is your time for this question. So I was literally just on the market train for L this past Saturday, going back to my roots when I started my career as a small business lender. So I would go after the bipartisan infrastructure law and the federal law that would work to get passed and bring those dollars to the city of Philadelphia as a way to look at the you know, build and do that on Rosemont Boulevard, it's one of the deadliest roads in the nation. Um, I also believe that we have an important opportunity to fund mass tra transit right now. We have the great bones of the great public uh, transit system that desperately needs an infusion of investment. Um, I want to make sure that uh, you know we're, we're making the, uh, things affordable, also look at the infrastructure bills, but really incentivize funding for mass transit. Um, I support the idea of investigating um, a subway system or a rail line. However, in the meantime, we can have a, a express bus uh, in South America, they have tubes, you go in the tube, you pay your thing, the bus comes in, the doors open, you get on, you have a center lane, uh, you will travel that. Long-term light rail, immediately express vehicles to and fro, but no one will want to ride mass transit if it is not safe and if it is not clean. I live 100 feet from the York and Dolphin Station. My whole life we've counted on stepped up. We saw it during COVID, essential workers kept our cities open. I grew up in Hunting Park, so Roosevelt Boulevard is where I've spent a lot of time, and I would fight with and, and work with our federal partners to get the funding so we can plan it out and connect hundreds of thousands. Thank you. I support the Roosevelt Boulevard subway. I would advocate for funding from the state and federal governments. It's a two to three billion dollar project. Uh, but Roosevelt Boulevard is one of our most dangerous roads, and over 100,000 people would ride a subway a day projected. Uh, so I would support that. Thank you. I think our, our, sub, our septic system is just completely broken and unsafe. Um, the board is going in the wrong direction. I don't like the way this is run. I, I wouldn't support a subway on Roosevelt Boulevard, but I do think they have to secure the safety of it. They have to have promotions to get people back on it. and, and uh, I would look at doubling the system that we now have there and analyzing the input of the riders, whether or not we're getting more riders and, and how many more riders are we getting so that we can make plans for the future. I would support the subway in Muscle Boulevard. I also support the subway extension to the Navy Yard and also support covering Vine Street from Ben Franklin Bridge to 25th Street and recapturing that land like Boston did. Now we'll work with federal and state partners to leverage our investment. So by the way, everyone in the audience, you're welcome today to go up to Northeast uh, High School and to join uh, Under the Stars, the Stars of the Philadelphia Orchestra and certainly candidates as well. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit. It's going to be two questions, show of hands. Um, young Philadelphians, old Philadelphians, they've shown their creative side on social media. I'm certainly not one of them. 
Um, we can spend a whole weekend, a whole evening talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of social media. Right now, over in Lancaster, they're debating whether or not to have TikTok. In Cleveland, they're debating whether or not phones, city-owned devices are going to have TikTok. This is the debate that's happening in Congress right now. So show of hands, who has a TikTok account? Okay. So then the next corollary to that, show of hands, would you ban TikTok from city devices? Okay. Um, this isn't me, this is Director of the FBI's Chris Ray talking about TikTok and numerous national security concerns, but we digress. All right, all right, very good. Uh, <laughs> you know that kids are exposed uh, to the arts in school. We're going to pivot back to the arts for a second. Uh, we know that if, if kids are exposed to the arts in school, they are more likely to participate in the arts as artists and audience members. In schools across Philadelphia, the, the arts education a generation ago is much different than what it looks like today. In 60 seconds or less, what is your plan to introduce the next generation of Philadelphians, today's students, to the visual and performing arts? And we are starting with the museum. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, this is my passion. Um, as a parent and as a council member, I thought to make sure that arts and music were restored back in every school to put instrumental music back in every school because an instrument um, in a child's hands from the earliest years. It's a transformative experience that many kids never get that opportunity. I've made it clear that education in the arts is the single most important passion for me. I am driving a mission to make sure that every young person has full access to the arts, and that is visual, dance, theater, and music, um, and making sure that we have and can drive the ability for young people to go out to experience the museums all across the city. That's why I want to restore the museum. Uh, partnerships that we used to have across the school district of Philadelphia, ensure that young people can have free passes to museums that the city can support and fund. I want to make sure that artists and working artists are embedded in our different institutions and especially for young people to have opportunities for internships in the arts. This is an, is an especially important thing both for after school, summertime, and, and other. Yeah, first, uh, the schools are tremendously. Um, inequitable in facilities, resources, curriculum, and especially in the arts. So the first thing is they have to all be equal, provide those resources. Second of all, the libraries should be really updated what they offer. They should, you should be able to uh, take a violin out, a guitar, uh, computer software programs, things like that in the local libraries. I'd like to see libraries reimagined so they're much more useful, 3D printers, that type of thing. Uh, and then finally, I did a program called PHL Live Center Stage. It's a free online platform for aspiring musicians. We could duplicate that in, in many different genres, make it available for, for people all across our city. First, we're going to change the antiquated way that we offer public education. We're not living in an agrarian society and no one's going to work the farm in the summer. So we're going to have year-long access to educational opportunities and ensure that the arts is a part of standard operating procedure in uh, education in Philadelphia. Second, we're going to take arts and culture to neighborhoods. Your race, class, socioeconomic status, and or zip code should not keep you from experiencing what you like. You can't be what you don't see. If it's in your schools and in your neighborhood, Danko was on Mansfield Avenue performing. If you've never seen Danko, you saw them in the neighborhood. We've got to take that to the community and we've got to do a better job in promoting what you already do. Half of what government should do is market better your existing opportunities to bring people into town and into your uh, various arts and culture organizations. There's no better place to show that public-private partnerships work than with the arts community and bring it into our schools. I know many nonprofit organizations with access to artists, independent artists, and others who can come in and provide real cultural pro programming in our schools in a very different way than not, not just a single art class. That will allow young people to see art in a broader context, in a community context, part, context partnering community-based organizations, 
And then our big organ, uh, uh, organizations, I know the Heart Museum, the Barnes and others already do this in a limited way. We can expand those partnerships. That way, we're not talking about whether we have the infrastructure in the school. We're going to take them to world-class facilities all throughout the city. Arts in our schools is incredibly important. My daughter is in seventh grade in the public school system, and every child deserves a good arts program in their school. As mayor, I will work to coordinate the existing arts programs that our cultural institutions do offer so that every school gets good programming. And as mayor, I will make sure to look for and get private funding, foundation funding. There's institutions such as the Kretzky Foundation and others that are offering grant funding to cities across the country. As mayor, I would make sure that we take advantage of that and make sure every school has good arts. Arts needs to be mandatory in K through 12. We also have to remember that's a career for people. And I believe in career and technical education and we should develop young people's skills as to where their talents are. I also think after school programming is very important, especially in our rec centers. It should be widely available in our rec centers. And we need to leverage our institutions, especially large and small institutions because they want to get kids involved. That's their customers of the future. And we need to coordinate um, efforts to, to facilitate that. Well, before my question begins, I did answer this question as my solution to spread art to all 66 wards in Philadelphia, as well as, as um, making employment um, for all artists throughout the city of Philadelphia. So can I stand on that answer? You can use your time if you'd like. I, I stand on that answer. All right, fair enough. Well, we do know that arts and culture in the schools improve grade point averages, reduce dropout rates, and improve attendance. But right now, we have a problem in the cultural and arts institutions. We have a lack of enough people coming to the events. I would suggest that we have in our high schools from 9th to 12th grade, we offer a certain amount of free tickets to every student in 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade to the cultural institutions in the city to expose them to the arts and culture. And I would take it a step further. We have 50,000 transactions that occur a year, whether it's real estate sales or refinances, not that many today with rates, but we have 50,000 transactions. Every buyer and seller gives them two tickets to an event and expose them to the culture and arts because you need to build a bigger base in the city. I talked earlier about my first um, instrument with a clarinet and a tenor sax, but really it was a recorder, which I had in elementary school. My son also is on the autism spectrum. His first instrument was also a recorder, but it was at Selma Music School, a great institution, not in Houston Elementary School for Hill Freedom. So we have a phenomenal opportunity. In fact, the Commonwealth Court made an interesting decision that's going to provide additional funding, not only for the school district of Philadelphia, but funding for school districts around the Commonwealth. So I'll use my leadership as mayor and talk to mayors all around the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to make sure that funding is coming to our school district, but also making sure we're dedicating some of those funding for arts, because arts provide the creativity for young people to start a career, to be an entrepreneur, to buy leadership opportunities. The entire creative economy comes from the exposure that young people have from arts. That's the exposure that I had as a young person. That's the exposure my son had at some of the music school. And that's the exposure we're going to have to the young people in the city of Philadelphia in the Green Administration to make sure they have the opportunity to flourish in this creative economy as entrepreneurs and future leaders. Okay, we are, um, this is the penultimate question. Uh, all right. So Philadelphia is one of the highest tax burdens of its residents in the nation. Um, most peer cities don't even have a wage tax. Do you support lowering the wage tax? And what is your specific plan to achieve this? Albeit only 30 seconds of a specific plan. Mr. L. I introduced a bill to lower the wage tax by $100 million, $50 million the first year, and then uh, $10 million through the, uh, the remaining years. Um, we can lower the wage tax, and we should. Uh, every study that we've had has said the number one thing to encourage employment in this city is to reduce the wage tax. Right now, because of the pandemic, we have people not paying the wage tax, and they don't want to come back into our city. Yes, I want to reduce the wage tax, and a way to do that is to grow Philadelphia's economy. We have to make it safer, cleaner, and greener with access to economic opportunity for all. And when we encourage businesses to want to locate here and more home ownership so there are more people contributing to the tax base. We can't just spend 
uh, for programs, we have to learn how to grow revenue as well to take care of our own business. The city has a plan for a wage reduction, and I continue to support that in a responsible way. I'd like to see us invest before we begin a more aggressive reduction um, in any of the plans outside of what I've already proposed, which is I believe BERT reduction being the most impactful for small black and brown businesses. I released a business plan last week. As mayor, I commit to reducing the wage tax and reducing the business income and receipt tax. We need to create an environment where small business and entrepreneurship can thrive. And that will create good paying jobs. Then we can also create job pipelines from our poorest neighborhoods to those good paying jobs. Together, we can thrive, but we have to look at, at our economy as one city. Well, I support the current plan to have you know, relatively small increases in the wage tax, but the tax I'm more concerned about is the real estate taxes and the regentrification problem of forcing people of lower income, senior citizens, and handicapped people out of their houses. So I would like to have a cap on real estate taxes, 5%, so we don't force people out of their houses. And I do agree we have to grow our economy. If we got people out of poverty and grow our economy, we better reduce all the taxes. We don't have another way to do it. We need to lower, get rid of the wage tax right away. We also need to reverse generational poverty right away. I have the plan to reverse generational poverty. If that's put in place, it will grow our tax base and it will grow our economy. I agree with reducing the wage tax, but I also agree with reducing the net income of the birth tax. The net income of the birth tax is the reason why 60.5% of the jobs we created in the last 10 years pay less than 35,000, while in the country it's 29%. Here's the problem. New York, in New York, they have the highest business and local taxes, they're 16.2. Philadelphia is 15.9. Third highest in the country, California at 8.8. Chicago, seven, and Boston, seven. We're at 15.9, that's a problem. As chair of the Finance Committee, I put together the plan that the mayor adopted and the vast majority of my council members also adopted, which helped to reduce our wage tax and the net income portion of the business income receipt tax, the small business tax, to the lowest level we've seen in 50 years. But at the same time, it provided more dollars for public safety and doubled the homestead exemption to push back the mayor's 31% real estate tax increase, but still making investment in quality life improvements in our city. That was the green plan that I got done Pulling together members of the city council as well as the administration. I'm glad the mayor put it into his budget he announced today. Our tax structure is from the 1990s. Uh, the last time we had a real tax commission was back in 2001. We need to have a tax structure for the future of Philadelphia. And that shouldn't be based on just looking at individual taxes ad hoc year to year. It doesn't make sense to plan budgets like that. There is absolutely a case to see taxes reduced and to see investments grow in other places, but we can't do that unless we actually have a planned approach towards it. So as mayor, I have committed to, uh, to a new tax commission to see a real investment for the city we want, not for the city that we had had 25 years ago. Thank you. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk for a moment about violent crime, uh, which has certainly affected way too many Philadelphians. Every incident has something in common, both an assailant and a victim. For victims and their families, there is a long road to mental and physical recovery. Uh, we know the Kimmel Center plays a role in helping this. Share with us what role the arts can play in this recovery and what role City Hall can play. With 30 seconds or less, we'll start with you, Ms. Parker. Arts and culture <laughs> allowed me to see beyond the limitations of my own life. When I learned that I had a voice by watching Maya, Sonia, Alice, Intazaki, and Ann, I learned that I was valued and that my current circumstances wouldn't determine what my future would look like. The arts were healing for me. It was therapeutic for me. And it should be standard operating procedure in neighborhoods and particularly with our young people across the city. I agree. I think art, the arts and help us deal with some of the mental health and trauma challenges that we have in our communities. I use art as, a, again, I keep repeating, it's a point of bringing people together. It's a point of recognizing communities, valuing communities, and what they bring to the community. Um, what they bring with them, so their, their diversity, their language, um, and honoring who they are uh, as they begin to 
to unravel what it is to be, in, in, for many of us, and for particularly the immigrants, a new space for them where violence um, and the propensity of violence is, is at least in part, in part of that problem. The trauma that our city is going through, that people in our neighborhoods where gun violence is so high, the trauma is horrible. And the arts are a way to heal. I know that from being on the board of Mural Arts since 2016, I've seen that healing power, the, the power of the Mural Arts program, the Guild program in the neighborhoods, uh, the power of being able to express oneself through art, to find community through art. I will make sure that it is a, a priority for me. So I think there's plenty of evidence that the built environment affects crime and violence. And th things like litter and dumping, boarded up houses and graffiti, that they all promote violence. And I think fixing them and, and public art installations speak to our soul. It speaks to our soul, it's soothing, it helps us with our, our mental state, it gives us hope for the future, and I think it is important. It should be more widely used. So, as mayor, art, in reality, is part of my anti-violence program. It's a major part of the program. See, as my program is going through the neighborhoods, recovering the neighborhoods, and overturning generational poverty, and giving people jobs and, 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 and education, also, some of these people want to become artists. So I am going to be pushing them in that particular way and making it possible for them to make a living in that position. <clears throat> Arts can play a big role, but I will also say that uh, Jane Goldman is doing an amazing job in neural arts. And as you know, I donated my salary the last almost seven years to different programs. And recently I donated, I think, 50,000 to the Guild program, because it's such a good program. But she has taught me that art demonstrates everyone's right to be seen and heard. It inspires action on education. It can help people who have mental illness. It's really, really important. And I would actually, as mayor, ask Jane and others to assist me on this. Jane is an amazing person. Going back to the commercial. Thank you. <laughs> so when I announced my public safety plan, I talked about presence, which is more police officers that reflect the city, accountability, work, and our criminal justice partners. But opportunity and investment, that ties in directly to the arts and culture community. I was on the board of the Philadelphia Culture Fund. I saw the pleasure and the joy that nonprofits receiving dollars from the city of Philadelphia and going to a lot of different programs and see what they do to prevent young people getting caught up in the criminal justice system. You heard everyone talk about the Guild program, which focuses on restorative justice and helping returning um, citizens come back to their communities. That's what I do in a great administration, work with arts and culture. Um, so as an educator and as a member of city council, I work very closely with young people who are experiencing violence, who are returning from the Juvenile Justice Services Center. And one thing they made very clear, that's how violence is dehumanizing, homelessness is dehumanizing, hunger is dehumanizing. And that's why as mayor, I'm deeply invested in the fundamental humanity and expressive power that arts brings back to individuals who experience violence. It's why one of the reasons um, I'm invested in the arts is to bring back mentorship to, to young people, to make sure that we embed the arts in our DBH, our uh, uh, DHS system, and in our anti-violence work as well. The spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. That's the arts, poetry, and music, to reach people. Um, as a former prosecutor here in Philadelphia, defense attorney, member of the board of Nazareth Hospital, Hahnemann University, Community College of Philadelphia, Walnut Street, Theater, WYBE, Public Television, the arts will be used to help people overcome trauma and for people who are looking for redemption and inspiration. Okay, um, uh, we are gonna have the last component of the evening. Um, if 30 seconds, um, we wanna reframe rather than closing remarks that we've heard at other uh, uh, forums. Um, I want to look at it for this lens. This is a large field. Um, when we look at Mayor Nutter's first win, when we look at Mayor Kenny's first win, those are also large fields. So next January, how will you begin uniting a divided city, a divided field, potentially? How are you going to work with your opponents to move forward over the next four years to promulgate the vision that we heard tonight? We have 30 seconds, and we'll start with the community centers. 
<clears throat> public, I take public service very seriously, and many of the elected officials and my colleagues who are running here today, I believe in their um, goal of, of public service. This is not an exercise. This is not I'm running and then I'm going off on some other um, mission. This is the job that I took because I, I not only did I believe that some of my lived experience um, was was vital to, and my voice was vital to the city of Philadelphia. That is the same thing that I would use as mayor of the city of Philadelphia. I will value the different perspectives that come forward and I will harness the, the urgency I'm running for mayor because I love Philadelphia and believe that everyone that lives here deserves a city that's as good as them. Uh, I believe I'm the right person to lead, lead Philadelphia forward, that I have the right experience, courage, and vision. Uh, and upon winning uh, and becoming uh, the mayor, I, of course, will work with everyone and unite this city because we are one Philadelphia. To my, to my career as a grocer, I'm in a co-op that has four different unions. I really couldn't, I'm not the emperor. I can't do anything without collaboration. And, I, and almost everything I've done in my life has been collaborative. We can argue on this stage, but when it's over, we all need each other. And I plan to collaborate with everyone I can to try to turn this city around. From what I've seen, everyone here is, is deeply disturbed with the issues that are facing Philadelphia today. That's the reason why you see everyone on this stage running for mayor. I don't have any qualms with anybody up on this stage because I have seen and know that each of them are a true leader and can do something to help this city thrive and grow. So therefore, it's a conversation. A conversation between me and them as to what they would like to do, what they see themselves doing to make Philadelphia a better place. You know, I remember running for mayor and I want to be your mayor. I want what's best for the city end of the day. That's what I care about. What is the best for Philadelphia? And not in the short term, but also in the long term. And I think collaboration is key. I think everyone needs to know, you know that old expression, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. You need to build relationships with people, especially if you're a leader. People have to like you and trust you before you can lead them. And that's very important. I build that collaboration with everyone. So when I announced my campaign, I said that Philadelphia should expect more deserve better from our city, and that goes to leadership. When we think about Governor Rendell meeting with um, then Council President John Street in John Street's office, that's about leadership. It's working with people regardless of their background. And I think that's the type of perspective that we need to have as a city. It's not about me, it's about how we move the city forward. It's not only like collaborating with the people on the stage, but collaborating with the people in the communities all around the city of Philadelphia. That's the type of leadership that people expect and deserve in the city of Philadelphia to bring back hope that we can be the city that we should be. Before I ever got on to city council, I was a community organizer who often stepped into places where there was a lot of struggle and, and difficulty. I didn't come there because I had political titles or power. I came because we were leading a big vision for how the city could be, how people had to live, how children should grow up, and how a city had to rise. Um, I bring to the table immense amounts of leadership. As mayor, I intend to lead with a vision. Um, my style of government is called FOMO, fear of missing out. We don't want to miss what we're able to do because we can pull this city together and it is impossible to look away when the people are benefited. We have very different approaches, but we have amazingly the same desire, the same uh, wants for ourselves, our families, our neighborhoods, our communities, and our city. Results will make the difference. People have to see actual dramatic change occurring on day one. The effect of that will be to bring people together. We're not fighting with each other. We should be working with each other. The answer is, is yes. Uh, I am not a leader who would allow my ego to stop me from working with anyone who I thought could help add value to making our city the safest big city in America, the cleanest big city in America. That's Democrats and Republicans in Harrisburg and Washington, D.C., my colleagues, former colleagues here, and those of you in the audience, anybody who can add value to making us be the greatest city that we can be, there's room for you in the Park Administration. All right, folks, let's give all of our candidates one more round of applause. Franklin was asked, what type of government are we going to have? 
And I think our democracy is fairly fragile. We can all agree on that. And I want to thank you all for strengthening our democracy by getting in the arena. I want to thank the hundreds of diverse Philadelphians who've joined us and have also um, really shown you know, committing your evening to this. Thank you. And I want to also thank our host, Matthias, who I believe is somewhere around and is going to conclude uh, this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ari and Jenny. Truly, thank you to uh, all the candidates for uh, unraveling many, many important themes. I often get asked by educators. They say to me, you know, our, our band's okay, how do, we, how do we make it better? And I'll ask them, well, how often does the band rehearse? And they'll say, oh, we have half an hour a week. And I said, uh, well, your soccer team's doing well. How often does the soccer team be? Every day. We need a mayor in this city that thinks about the arts every single day. We have a global force in the arts, be it the orchestra, the opera, the museum, uh, mural arts, with extraordinary leadership. Yannick, Jane Golden, we've heard from them. We need you to think about the arts every day. We thank you for not just being advocates. We need you to commit to supporting the arts every day uh, in real, coherent, and tangi uh, tangible ways. Um, thank you both for moderating an excellent debate. Thank you to all. Yeah. I hope, you guys, I hope you guys have fun. We certainly did. Thank you to all the candidates for mayor for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah.